All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, we are now going to do part two video series here on the 10 C's for survival preparedness. We're going to go over those five second five C's of sustainability. And I'm going to cover those in detail and once again go over some examples. Uh, they're cotton material, compass, candling or illumination, cargo tape, and canvas needle. As we go over those, write any comments below of other items that you think you have that cover these uh, 10 C's and food for thought. Uh, I may add that to my preparedness kits and or more information you're interested in learning specifically on survival methodology. When the weather gets better, we're going to go into some survival technique videos, shelters, food procurement, traps and snares, uh, water procurement, things of that nature. Maybe some uh, navigation techniques, field expedient navigation techniques. So uh, send any comments below uh, of topics you're interested in. We'll get a video created and cranked out. Thanks, and let's get into those second five C's of sustainability. So you see the next C's is cotton material, what I have in front of us here. Cotton material is extremely important in your kits. Um, you, we want as big of an item and as quality of an item in our kits as we can have. You know, if you have a mini kit, you're limited on space and you could still meet the requirements and have something rather than nothing. And you know, cotton cloth, I have a couple things to show you here. I'm gonna start with just the uh, cotton t-shirt. I got a bunch of old white cotton t-shirts. Why not just cut those up for your mini kits? That's what I do. And uh, these things fold really small and actually I can buffer my signal mirror in there with it <clears throat> so it doesn't get scratched up with this nice cotton cloth. Um, if you haven't watched my Elite e, e Mini Tin Survival Kit video, watch that. Um, I have a, a small cotton cloth in there. And um, so, you know, you can go, if you have a bug out bag or a bigger kit, obviously go with a nice scarf or shema. That's what this is. Um, if you're wondering what a shema was, I think I've referred to it earlier. But uh, this is just, you've probably seen uh, military guys at least wearing these wrapped around their neck and their head and stuff. And that's kind of where this comes from. But uh, in the military, I wore these from time to time. Pores are pretty large on these they're not as this isn't as tightly woven as this cotton cloth here this is cotton as well but this makes a great water filter so again what's the reason for cotton um, as a sea of sustainability uh, multiple purposes filtering our water like we talked about getting a lot of the organic matter floaters out of the water you may even have use it as a pre-filter for your water filter or before you get that water uh, down into a container that you have to either boil it or purify it um, so this could be a nice pre-filter also you can get this wet uh, put it around your neck and head for evaporative cooling cool yourself down so you don't overheat in extreme heat conditions weather conditions also this is um, you could use it for hygiene you could wipe yourself down uh, wring this thing out let it dry reuse it and also as a last resort you can use this as a form of tinder but you don't want to burn this thing up since it is so utility and multi-purpose unless you absolutely have to. But this can be worn, like I said, for protective covering over your head and face and evaporative cooling. So I just use the cotton t-shirts primarily in my mini kits so that I do cover the cotton category. You may have another item you like to use, uh, but make sure it's cotton and it's not a synthetic. All right, guys, let's move on to the next C of sustainability, which is compass. All right, that next C of compass here, as you can see, I have uh, some different options here. Obviously a magnetic compass is huge um, and it's gonna allow you to find your way, um, your direction. You may, may or may not have a map. Uh, map would be helpful, um, but uh, a magnetic compass is huge and you know these are drawn towards the magnetic field, uh, iron ore field up in the north portion of the North Pole area, Canada. And um, different parts of the world and different areas that you use one of these, they have what's called a declination compared to the map you may be using. And you need to know that um, so you can make adjustments to your azimuth. But uh, just to keep this simple, there's a lot of, there's some field expedient direction finding methods. That's a separate class on survival techniques. But um, I'm talking about our kits, um, what's in my kits and preparing kits and what, what are some 
uh, items for food for thought to use in those kits. This is a, a, an ar army lensatic or military lensatic compass. Um, this is a good quality one. It's got glowing tritium at night, so you can literally read your degrees and see your index lines. Uh, you can you can adjust that line there to match up with your azimuth to line up with that arrow and you know shoot your azimuth through the sighting wire and so on. So use this a ton in the military, was very good with it before the days of GPS. I mean I could I could navigate thousands of meters in the dark with this, not even using night vision and keeping a pace count and come come out very close to my objective or my point. Uh, got good at it. That stuff's obviously perishable, your map reading skills and all that. But this, if you can have a nice compass like this in a full-size bug out bag, do it. Um, or your bigger kits, hunting uh, pack, whatever. Some of you back these up with uh, GPSs now. You should have the baseline navigation skills in case your GPS fails to work. The batteries die, you break it. This is a nice Sun 2. Um, lensatic compass or magnetic compass and this has uh, got the uh, auto adjustment declination screw built into it so if you do have a declination where you're at you can have it pre-adjusted um, it's got different map scales along the side MGRS military grid reference system or um, USGS type maps which are mile squares versus a thousand meter squares on military maps so if you got multiple options for those um, you can make adjustments, like I said, for your declination. You've got a mirror here for sighting and shooting your azimuth. You can line up the illumination with that illumination line and shoot through that aperture on the top. So this is what I have in my bug out bag. I keep this in my wife's bug out bag. Um, and then in your smaller kits, your your mini my mini tins and uh, the small medium size kits that I do, I always put a button compass in there. Why packability? Uh, you're just going to get your cardinal directions. You don't have all the uh, degrees like you do on these two real compasses here. So, But this is a great survival backup. Uh, maybe in a subsequent video we'll go over field expedient navigation methods, shadow tip method, star method, fashioning, taking a needle, magnetizing it, putting it in water on a leaf or whatever, and it'll spin. Um, so, I mean, there's, a, there's some different techniques out there, but... These are the three basic that I use. You're going to see here, too, that on that Sun 2 uh, compass, I have my Ranger beads. Uh, got good with these. Navigating the old school way for years. Um, you've got nine beads down here, and these are hanging off your gear. And as you do, you got to know what your 100-meter pace count is. As you go 100 meters, you drop a bead. Next 100 meters, drop a bead till you get to nine. Then you pull down one of these top for 1,000 meters and then restart this nine, push it back up. So I know I've just won a thousand meters. So that's kind of the rough uh, MO for using Ranger beads. Um, good to keep track, um, especially when you, <laughs> you're busting your keister through the woods. So, all right, so those are some highlights on compass. All right, everyone, that next C is now candling device. I want you just to think of not a candle literally, but a device that provides illumination or light. Obviously a big deal out in a survival scenario. You know, the best item in, to have in a bug out bag, in my opinion, uh, after spending a lot of time in the dark and a lot of time in poor visibility is a headlamp. It gives you that good hands-free illumination. And there's tons of brands of these now. This was one of the better brands for years, you know, when I was backpacking as well. And now the Petzels, there's just a lot of them out there. Uh, but this is a good one. This one is a, also a tactical one, not because of the color of the band or the color of the housing, but because it's got white light, bright white. It's got multi-purpose. This also has a uh, red lens, okay? And that is a big deal, especially in the military when you are in... A tactical scenario, combat zone, you need to have dampened light or noise light and litter discipline. Light discipline, one of those is always using a, a filter, a red lens on your flashlight uh, when you're on the ground doing a mission to do a map check or something like that. So this has the red light uh, as well as multi-function uh, white lights. These, a lot of these now too, they pivot out. So you can have that and it'll, you can adjust that to point down more. 
uh, in your direction of travel or whatever. So these are great. You can adjust this to fit on a helmet <coughs> over your, your headgear or whatever, or just on your head. So obviously I got this in my bug out bag. Um, I put one of these in my car preparedness kit <coughs> as well. The car that I build and, and make for people. The car preparedness kit, I use a um, Duracell brand. It's a little bulkier than this. It has a lot of the same functions. It actually has side lights too, but it doesn't have the red red light. Uh, I get those at a three pack uh, in a three pack at Costco, and they're a great deal. Uh, most of these use uh, AAA batteries. I think this one has three in here. Yeah, and um, most of them do. The next item I'd like to show you. Hopefully, you've seen these. If not, I'll introduce you to it. I call them a bite light. Um, it is extremely bright and compact. It runs off a watch battery. Um, and I put this, these in all my mini kits. You see that you have a attaching ring here, a little mini D ring. You could uh, hook this to a zipper. A lot of people put it on, on their zippers. Um, but I always had it on my tactical. I had one of these on my tactical gear with a uh, red lens on it. Uh, so I could use these for a little spotlight you know, immediate light right on the spot. So those are nice to have. Again, I have that in my Elite E&E Survival Tin and all my small survival tins. A couple things, another thing I wanted to show you, good old Chem Light. Uh, these I put in my car preparedness kit. I have them in my bug out bag. These are great. Um, there's, this is a 12 hour green Chem Light. These are six inches long. You they have a little eyelet or a hook. You can hang them on something. You can actually read by these. These are, I don't know, indispensable. They come in different colors too. Um, we even had infrared versions in the military to, to mark different objectives and whatnot. Under night vision, you could see them. So what I have here is I have some chem lights as well. And you see these little mini chem lights. These are also green. And I think these are 10 hour and they fade, but uh, these are great. Uh, for mini kits, my mini survival tins. These are also great. We, we used to mark, use these for markings. When I was in a recon unit in the military, I would go and, and locate the enemy's position. And then the old school way was I'd also guide them in to show them where their support by fire would be and their the assault position, what I thought the best assault position would be. And and so moving to that location, we would use these in the bark of the trees um, when we were doing these kinds of things in, the, in wooded terrain. And you could see your approach march, but the enemy wouldn't see them unless he came and button hooked around, which could happen. But they also made these in infrared too that we had. So these are really cool. I put these in all my mini kits. This right here is a cool item. I don't put these in all my kits, but um, this is almost like tritium in here and you charge it with sunlight or by a bright light. And this thing is completely waterproof and watertight. Uh, I use these for diving. Um, and this is a great m way to mark something or some spot illumination like on a zipper again or whatever. Um, these are a little more spendy for if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna build a really cool kit, um, then maybe, but uh, just showing you some of the options I have on hand. And I got some good old flashlights. I had some old high speed ones here, fairly high speed, operate off of one, two, threes, real bright. As sure fire, this thing's super expensive. They're always expensive, but uh, so that actually can mount into a, a, a mount for a weapon light, but um, it's got a little pressure. You can go to pressure on this. So um, if you have room for a nice light, I wouldn't go with this big in any of my kits. As a matter of fact, I don't have this in my bug out bag. I have something similar I'm going to show you next, but uh, this is just an old throwback from my military days. It is very bright uh, and durable. This is something I have very similar. Um, Through Night, I think, is what made by. This is kind of a knockoff cheapy version. I got this just to give you an idea. It's aluminum housing. I've got a lot better one with better settings and stuff, but this thing is super compact. And um, some of these go down so they're fairly small where they can use small watch batteries. This uses um, AAAs, two of those. So pretty bright. And I think this had, okay, so this is just single setting. This is just another throwback I had from one of my kits from, you know, military days. And so um, very small. This, is in, this was in a um, first responder med kit. Um, 
uh, the higher end med kit. And uh, this is something you can clip on, just pop in your mouth. I mean, provide some, and it's filtered, it's a green light, but look how bright that is. So just some small, just trying to get you thinking about small compact lights here for your kits. This, and again, the tendencies for survival preparedness are, is specifically geared towards kits, right? Your bug out bags, survival kits, preparedness tins, those kinds of things. And I build all of mine using these. You may not consider this. I mean, it's technically in combustion. Um, and I think when I covered combustion, I showed you one of these. Um, just a candle of some type. You could have smaller candles or whatever. Um, but you know what? This does provide illumination. And actually, this this Yuko beeswax candle will fit in those candle lanterns. It's got the right size and shape. So this happens to be a 12 hour beeswax or a little more expensive, but uh, this thing not only provides flame so you can light other things and stays lit pretty well, it provides illumination. And if you're in a closed space, this can actually warm your space up to 20 degrees. So these are awesome. I put these in my medium kit. My I call it my grab and go survival kit. Also my bug out bag. So and my wife's bug out bag in her vehicle. Anyway, that should that concludes the third C of sustainability, which is candling device. All right, we are on that fourth C of sustainability. Cotton materials first, then compass, candling device. Now we're on cargo tape. There is a ton of tape and tape types out there, colors, types, and everything. Um, what I like to use is as close to what I used in the military. We used to call it 100 mile an hour tape. Super strong stuff. Uh, I don't even know what the tensile strength. I, I think I used to know, but I don't remember anymore. We would repair gear, tape wounds. I mean, that stuff was for everything, right? The closest thing, the civilian version I found, it's really good stuff. Um, you can get this at Walmart or Amazon or whatever, is Gorilla Tape. Um, this stuff is very similar. The only difference I've found is when you roll this on itself compared to 100 mile an hour tape in the military, this will delaminate and pull apart and you can't get it apart sometimes. Um, whereas 100 mile an hour tape, I could roll it on itself and it was pretty good about pulling away. So this is not as good with that aspect, but it's is strong, I think, and very sticky. I show you in my um, Elite E&E &E, uh, Survival Tin Mini Tin, um, how I prep the tape and what I roll it on. Uh, watch that video, pretty cool. Um, and I think I did that in the grab and go kit as well over that same Fresnel lens case. So anyway, great item. I try to, you know, how much of this do you need in your kit? As much as you can have, right? <laughs> but um, you, we're limited by space, right? And practicality. So in a bigger kit, I may, or in my vehicle, I may have a whole roll of this. So, but in my mini tin, I may just have two feet rolled up on something. So, um, just good to have, worth its weight in gold. Oh, and another great thing about this, other than, you know, gear repair, uh, taping up a sign or a note if you had to leave it, just tons of uses. It's also a great form of tinder. This stuff, you can tear a hunk off and boy, it lights very well and stays lit pretty good. So, uh, there's that aspect. Then we have the good old... And again, there's tons of tapes out there, but these are the two that I use and I go to because I've just used them for so long and I know they're tried and true. The other is just this electrical tape, vinyl tape. Some people call it friction. We call it black friction tape in the military. I would tape or tie up my gear with, you know, square knot and, and a uh, overhand knot to close it off on either end, burn the ends of the 550 cord before I do that, of course. Then I would tape it with this. And this was something we'd tape our old style web gear in the 90s and stuff um, and tape the buckles with, subdues, things that were shiny, you would subdue them by using this black friction tape, electrical tape. So this, man, I've taped many a wound in my hand with this in the field and just drove on. I mean, this stuff will seal a wound. You can clean it the best you can, just tape it up till you can get you know the time and opportunity to get some treatment on it so those are two great ideas for your cargo tape all right everyone our final category or fifth C of sustainability is canvas needle I'm going to show you some different needles and some things that uh, I've used and why why I use these and where I get them and so you know this one here was a Walmart purchase so it was this one here and these were called repair needles 
and they're, they go from this large one here down to a smaller length here. And you know, the smaller length is just too small. So for that kit, I don't get any more. Did have a couple curved repair needles. Those are great for sutures and stuff. But um, instead of that, I went, I started, I've been buying the yarn darners. And this thing's like 90 some cents for seven pieces. I think this was a dollar something for seven pieces. And these are just bigger needles. Even the, the smallest one is still great. Um, and they're very sturdy and thicker. These were more small diameter needles. So I put these in all of my mini tin survival kits, one of these typically. And if I want, you know, like I have my own personal bug out bag and my own personal tin. I, I just use the top quality item in every category and then some specialty categories that I've come up with to build my bug out bag and I mean it costs some money in it but everything in there is quality so what I'm talking about is instead of these needles here these are going to work great you can run your dental floss through there typically I don't put thread there's not a lot of room on my mini tins um, so I do dental floss and that's you can do a ton of repairs with as we discussed on cordage these are what's called sail needles these babies are stainless steel and heavy duty um, these are very strong and this is the high-end item I was alluding to if you're gonna have a needle one needle have one of these nice big eyelet I mean that look how thick that is compared to these just I mean I can't even hardly bend it and then if you look at the point on this I could show you that up against my finger that point is three-sided it's like a spear, so one, two, and three, and each edge is sharp down to a very fine point. So, I mean, you could punch through leather, no problem with that. You could sew stuff on your, your clothing, um, repair your clothing, stitch your tarp. Um, sutures, that's a pretty good size needle for sutures. But I'll tell you what, if that's all you have and you, you, know, you need to seal up a wound, you'll do it. So that is the quality item. Then I just another thing to think about, um, sometimes in travel, the travel area or the hygiene travel stuff at Walmart um, or wherever you can find these little mini sewing kits. Um, I ordered these online. I have several of them in a little bit bigger kit. You just throw one of those in there. Um, you got multiple threads, multiple needles. They're already pre-threaded so you're not fighting it under duress and bad weather uh, and you haven't eaten in a week. Um, and you're trying to thread the needle, whereas this has got pre-threaded, got a safety pin, you got a couple extra buttons in there too. So those are just, they take up more space. I mean, especially in the box, you could pull all those out and stick them in a uh, mini tin. And I've done that, um, have a pre-threaded one in there. Uh, but these thread, these needles aren't the best needles though, in general, compared to multi-purpose like these or even these bigger uh, yarn darners. These things are pretty small for stitching repairs with clothes. But what if I need to do other things that are heavier duty? So just keep that in mind, you, you know, uh, when I build my kits uh, for folks, and you know, I really go through the analysis on a lot of this stuff and kind of choose those items. All right, well that concludes the 10 C's for survival preparedness. You have five C's of survivability, which are cutting, combustion, cover, container, and cordage. And then you have the five C's of sustainability, which is cotton material, compass, cantling device, or headlamp, illumination, cargo tape, and canvas needle. Thanks for joining me and uh, going through all this with me. I hope I gave you some good ideas. Uh, please do comment below. Uh, give me some good feedback on some other things you'd like to see, or maybe I need to elaborate on something or whatever. Just hit me up. I can't wait to hear your feedback, and we'll see you next time. Take care.